if you think about a growing population that by the year 2050 is going to have 9 billion people. We already have world hunger today and it's only going to get worse. The bigger picture, I think, is what gets lost. We need to think of a safe and abundant food supply as a right and not a privilege. Technology is really what's going to ultimately be able to deliver more food uh, to more people uh, in the next 20 to 30 years. You know, in other parts of the world, I think there's probably a, certainly a, a greater awareness of food as you get people that are, you know, going to bed hungry at night. In the U.S., we've been pretty fortunate. It's really easy to go into a store and you can get whatever you want, basically year-round, for a reasonable price. But the technological advancements of agriculture, and the speed at which they can grow, and the accuracy at which they can plant and uh, take care of a crop are incredible, and people don't understand that. I think farmers can work together in a, in a variety of ways in terms of uh, better educating consumers about modern agriculture practices. First and foremost, I think, is through their commodity organizations. Um, and understanding exactly what it is that they want to convey. People need to understand how that food was grown, the types of people that grew it, what was necessary for that farmer, whether it be good soil, water, seed, fertilizer, crop protection. The farmers can't do this on their own. They need help. I think there can be a naivete among various stakeholders about how we can feed ourselves, let alone the world, without modern agriculture. Agriculture has been very divisive for many, many years. Uh, everybody operating in their own silos, whether you're a livestock producer or you're a corn soybean grower or a cotton grower, everybody has their own uh, particular areas of interest. We have consumers out there who, for rightly or wrongly, have um, sort of fallen in love with the word organic. Um, they believe it's a healthier lifestyle choice. We can get the same benefits from conventional agriculture. Um, we just need to go out, make those innovative steps, and then communicate well with, with the consumer base. Many consumers come from a different need base, which is quite natural. Consumers want confidence that they have a safe and abundant food supply, but they uh, have a hard time understanding exactly how their food is grown and what inputs go into it. And I think what we have to do is focus on three to four key cross-cutting issues that we can use as an industry, but more importantly as farmers. We should take advantage of every technology that we can to uh, feed the world and provide a safe and abundant food supply, and that means being open-minded and analytical about what those tools are. The Farm Bill could um, address areas that it hasn't addressed in, in the past, areas where they could go and, and, and provide innovation for specialty crops. Very little work's been done there, and yet growers want to provide high-yielding, healthy, nutritious food. We understand the importance of improving the food production around the world, and the importance of environmental protection, ensuring that our products can be used in a safe manner, uh, but absolutely ensuring that the freedom to operate is there for farmers to capitalize on. It's very important. As long as we can continue to operate in the environment that we are, where research is encouraged, innovation is encouraged, it's protected through things like intellectual property rights, and we also have a regulatory framework that's, that's based upon sound science, I think we'll be in a very good position. We talk about a large a farm that produces food for hundreds of people versus a local farm that produces for uh, a dozen people in a community or maybe even 50 people in a community. Uh, both of those are great uh, assets uh, for our country. People have become accustomed to the fact that you know, American farmers going to have food on their table and it's going to be relatively inexpensive as compared to you know, other places around the world. So I think there is some disconnect. Policy makers have an obligation to, to help talk about where their food comes from in, in the United States and then because it's all related back to global trade and it's all related back to regulation and it's all related back to food safety and these policies are written on Capitol Hill and the consumers are, are counting on policymakers to have a full understanding when they are making policy that they completely understand the issues at hand because it isn't just about the one consumer who's making the choice it really is about feeding the world and having that bigger picture because America has that opportunity to provide. And if we create uh, room for technology to succeed and support farmers, uh, we'll deliver on it.